they'll keep an eye on it. Troy Bell about to become the all-time season scoring average champion. Dan Calandrillo, 21 years ago for Seton Hall, averaged 27.4. Troy at 27.9. Last 11 has been to the tune of 30 points per game, John. I mean, this is a guy who gets the best defender and multiple defenders. It's been an outstanding senior season for him. Certainly one of the strong candidates. We'll talk more about it at halftime for Player of the Year in the Big East. And the first Buchanan to match up against him. Here's Sidney. No place to go. Of course, the Eagles have been without Yuka Agba. It's tipped away, deflected by Buchanan. Yuka went out on December the 1st, and he'll come back next year. I think that's a bigger loss than people gave him credit for. Is Bell, the guy that you wanted with the shot clock down. Well, there's an outstanding freshman getting him off and rolling as Craig Smith gets the first basket. Well, you've got three guys from Boston College that are going to do the majority of scoring. Bell, Smith, and Ryan Sidney. 57 among the three of them. Well, they are the top trio in the country. Ricky Wright reverses the foy, almost lost it, got it back. Here's Buchanan. Going a little smaller with his lineup. But Jay Wright figuring he can do that, Doris, because BC is a little smaller. Yeah, and with Gary Buchanan struggling to shoot the basketball, this team has struggled to score, but Ricky Wright can help that. The foul will go on the freshman Smith and Ricky Wright. This junior from East Chicago gets the first basket. There's Yuka Agbai, who will graduate, come back and play a fourth year in five as a graduate student next year. Started out the year great, John. Uh, just a guy who is a nuts and bolts, defend, rebound, do everything you want. Ricky Wright struggled against Virginia Tech. This was 19 minutes. And the Wildcats have their first lead. It's Ricky Wright completes the three-point play, and of course, Troy Bell over the weekend said he didn't care what happened in the uconn Pittsburgh game late on Sunday because things would take care of themselves if they could win. There's a quick three, very quick. He and Buchanan alike in that regard. They can shoot the three in a hurry. Yeah, and Buchanan actually got the draw the first time these two met, and that was a Villanova win. They said they were pretty pleased with it, what they were able to do in the half court with Bell. Buchanan, over the course of his career, not known for his defense. He's a three-point shooter. Improves on that side of the ball. He'll have to see the guard bell tonight. There's Foy, a freshman. And you mentioned it right at the beginning, Doris. Young teams will play a lot of freshmen. Sometimes they'll hit a wall late in the season. Yeah, and I think you know, this has become a Villanova team that when Buchanan shoots well, they play well. And they feed off of his ability to knock down shots early. The blocking foul goes against the Villanova's Derek Snowden. The junior from Baltimore picks up his first foul, the first on the Wildcat. Well, that last bucket by Bell gets him to be the 51st player. And that's talk about a select group of individuals he's just joined. 2,500 points and counting. He'll have a few more than that. Smith's going to pick up his second foul. And exactly. that's an early problem. Yeah, exactly what happened in the first matchup. He had two quick ones, had a sit. Andrew Bryant gets up off the bench for Al Skinner in a hurry. One of the reasons Al Skinner so desperately needs the bye is he knows playing a seven-player rotation, he's not going to go all the way through that tournament if he has to play on the opening day. Yeah, I mean, you're talking about just too tough physically and mentally. Perhaps the mental battle in that fourth game bigger than the physical. About the battle for Villanova, they really came apart in the second half at Virginia Tech, but they're playing their fourth game in the fourth different city in eight days. And a good start for Derek Snowden as he hits a three. The Wildcats at three point edge. Boy, Snowden's an improved three point shooter. I mean, he's more a guy of mid range and off the bounce. Sydney has to slip out of his hands and go out of bounds, so the Wildcats will get it back. As a matter of fact, Coach Jay Wright tried to make light of the situation. He told the guys, he said, hey, you all want to play in the NBA? This is what it's like to play in the NBA. You're going to play every other night for about a week. That's right. No walking, just a walk through, no practice. <laughs> Now how about at this point of the year, John, no seeds determined and no buys determined at this point in either division of the Big East. Boy from outside. Off the mark with a three. And the rebound foul goes on Andrew Sullivan. He'll pick up his first foul. And he will get it back. Trailing by three. Sullivan becomes a guy who has increased responsibility closer to the rim. In the absence of Jason Frazier, their freshman, he's got to be a guy who rebounds consistently. You know, they're not calling it a stress fracture, but they're calling it a stress situation. Mm. 
foul goes on Luis Hinnant, picks up his first foul. And it's not so much the numbers in terms of the scoring and the rebounding for Jason Frazier, averaging seven points a game, six rebounds a game, but it's the rotation, it's the extra body that has really affected the team and has put him in an outstanding freshman on the bench. Yeah, and certainly his numbers are respectful for a young guy. You're talking about seven points, six boards. And you're right, the way this team plays, all out, hard defensively every possession, certainly you need his body. A guy like Andreas Block has played more minutes in the last three games than he did the whole season, and you'll see that a lot. Bell fouled on a three, gets the three. For the 62nd <laughs> time in his career, he's fouled in three-point territory. I mean, what do you do? You, you don't, you certainly got to get up and challenge him, but you got to be careful so you close out and he's smart enough to certainly, once he feels contact, make yourself, yeah, fall down. <laughs> well, he's made more free throws than anybody else in Big East history, and Bell is a terrific foul shooter. You see his numbers overall are outstanding. His numbers in this latest run have been incredible. Well, that's what's remarkable. I mean, the efficiency with which he scored it. He's shooting 50% and 40% from three over the last 11 when he's averaged 30. You, know, you try a lot of different things with this guy to stop him. He's very good off a of pick and roll situation, an outstanding rebounding guard. Yeah. One of the things that the Wilds have to work hard on in practice is handling the pressure. They don't do it there. A tenant gets the turnover. Here's Sidney. He swing at the bell. One of the problems also for Villanova is the shooting of Buchanan last three games is under 30% from the field, and that's not going to get it done. Uh, Biggie seniors need to play and lead. And Gary, unfortunately, has hit a slump at a key time. Baseline, and good. Well, we done that time off the bench by Andrew Bryant. He's a little deceptive. You look at his frame, and you think hey, this is a banger, but he is much more a finesse, step away, and shoot jumpers guy. He shoots 39% from three. There's the double team in the steal. Bell gets it ahead, and it takes it inside, tries to draw the foul, and throws it away. It's going to take us to a timeout. Our first of the evening, 15.41 to play. It is the Eagles leading the Wildcats by three, thanks to the shooting of Troy Bell. Get the best values in America from Dodge. Take our best products like Dodge Ram Heavy Duty, the 250 horsepower Intrepid SXT, the best-selling minivan ever, and the VA-powered Durango. Plus our best warranty, Dodge's fully transferable 770 powertrain limited warranty. Plus our best deal, like up to a $4,500 cash allowance or 0% financing on most models. Add it all up, and it equals the best values in America. See your Dodge dealer or visit Dodge.com. <laughs> All this week on Dunkin' Donuts Hometown Sports. It's the high school version of March Madness, the holy grail for young athletes. And this is the place to turn for the personalities, the exciting plays, and the stories that make school sports so special. Don't miss our tournament coverage this week on Double DHTS. Tune in and watch your hometown stars shine. Only on AT&T 3, New England's TV Superstation. Manchester Monarchs battle the Springfield Falcons Saturday, March 8th at 7.30 p.m. on at and 3, New England TV Superstation. Well, you can't do a BC game without talking about Troy Bell, and so far, Doris, he's gotten off to a good start, got the quick three going, and got his team going. Comes off the screen, gets hit, uh, something he's been very capable of doing. This is the last 11 games, folks. 50% from three, 55% overall, 88% free throw shooter. He's always been excellent there. Six times over 30 points per game. And again, I, I mean, this is getting the best defender night in and night out. Providence, Virginia Tech, teams have thrown some junk defenses at the guy. He just finds a way to score. Wildcats handle the pressure. Sullivan attacks. A miss of a short one that time by Ricky Wright. Ricky Wright had a terrible game for him at Virginia Tech. Bell's three on the way, rimming out. Two Wildcats go up for it. 
and Wright comes away with it. That time he had to take it away from Alan Ray. And he's avoid the freshman. And I don't know those. You mentioned it. Some good young players. But the Utah, they're, they're young. Yes. It's just making spotty at times. Turnovers have hurt this team. Sullivan with a missed scramble for the rebound. And the Wildcats keep it. Here's Ray. Working on Hinnett, gets inside, uses the glass and scores. I love Alan Rand. This is just a guy who can make plays. They're off the dribble, off a pick and roll in the open floor. He does a pretty good job defensively. Warner Camp way outside, and Wright goes with him. Bell against Buchanan, a couple of outstanding seniors. This is Sidney's strength inside, but he missed the shot. Right the rebound. Yeah, Sidney's just struggling right now to shoot the basketball. Even close range here. Those are usually floaters he puts on. Three by Ray. Rattles home. So Alan Ray off the bench quickly in the book with five points, and the Wildcats go up by a couple. Well, that's confidence. You have to wonder in this last 10-game stretch how these young people are responding mentally. Alan Ray, solid start in his team, five of eight. He has had the last five points. Could they get the reach-in foul on Alan Ray? We got a hold on somebody. And I think it's going to go on Sullivan. It is on Gary Buchanan. It's his first. So the Eagles will keep it with 14.08 to play. We're still in the first half. Good crowd on hand, Doris, despite the fact the students really aren't here. They are on break. It's amazing what winning will do for you. <laughs> the Eagles five straight. People getting excited about their postseason opportunity. I mean, Watson in the lineup for the Eagles for the first time. About as deep as he'll go. We may see Johnny Jackson some. Join the camp. Might travel if we pick it down the lane. And yes, he eventually did. <laughs> I thought he did when he took the first step. Yeah, I did too. <laughs> and missed the first, catch the second. Jordan Camp's a guy who needs to get off early. And if you're going to guard him defensively, I'd get chest to chest with him and let him know you're around for the evening. Play on is the call. Ray with a good catch. The trap out of bounds. And the touch last by Dornicamp. So the Wildcats will keep it as Ray will inbound. There's that pressure they wanted to address this morning. This is a Boston College team that will come with a 1 2 2 and be selective on spots of the floor where they'll trap with it. Tried to go inside, deflected. Sullivan got it back to Ray. And they worked against the trap, but also attacking the trap. After you get the initial first couple of passes, then you go to the basket. Yeah, and certainly when you attack, you have to make good, solid decisions with the ball. Snowden thought he was open on the baseline, didn't get the ball. This is four. Now Snowden puts it up, and he'll go to the line. Foul is going to be on Watson. And it's a three-shot foul, I believe. Now, folks, this is with one tick left on the shot clock, so a killer if you're Boston College. You played outstanding defense for 34 seconds. Yet, three free throw opportunities. And on the season, with a 60% shooter, but a good start to his ball game tonight, already with six points. You're talking about Bell in these situations, the 62 times that he has been fouled shooting a three. And half the time, he makes all three yes. of the three throws, yeah. just as Snowden did there. Well, great scorers, guys who put up significant numbers. They are all shoot free throws well. They don't want to miss opportunities. Uncontested shots. 16-11, the Wildcats have their biggest lead up by five. Bell stripped as he got inside. Ray finds Sumter, and he's banged by Dornican. So Sumter will go to the line, and Ray will pick up his first foul. This is where the young Villanova team is at its best. In transition, use the athletes that they have in their underclasses, get out and make things easy offensively. Alan Ray, the rookie, gets a strip, and then turns the other direction. And they end up with this, Sumter running the floor. From four as a high school senior to a three position for Sumter, he's more and more comfortable in that spot. Well, it's a 9-0 run right now for the Wildcats, so they put together the first run, and they pushed their lead up to six. They had three freshmen on the court, but Foy comes off. Well, you mentioned a tough stretch, John. I mean, this is just night in, night out games. They lose a tough one on a John Allen jumper against Seton Hall, and then the second half was just was a tough, tough night. If you're Virginia Tech, the second half, 57 points against Villanova. Wow. 
A 10-0 run here for the Wildcats and a good start. Just the question is, can they keep their legs and maintain it throughout? They certainly didn't at Blacksburg the other night. Thrown away. Easy steal for Snowden. He'll take it down against Bell. Lay it home. Yeah, good job. They did a decent job in their half court defense going on, I think, through the first few minutes of this basketball game. They hedge hard on the screen for Bell. And then Snowden. Now, Snowden, an excellent defender. It was 11 to 8. There's another steal for Villanova. And a good job by Sumter to get it ahead that time. And laid in by Sumter off the feed by Snowden. Yes, Snowden's been really emotional. He's trying to lead this basketball team, Derek. So the run continues. It was 11 to 8. Now it's 22 to 11. So it is a 14-0 Wildcat run. Well, you that mentioned Snow and how fast he's gotten off, but it's been this emotional lift after he makes shots or somebody else makes shots. Watch the presence of mind. He gets a strip here and goes all the way coast to coast. So he's playing off the ball. It's last year forced to play the point, and then there's the heads-up play you talked about. That's just smart basketball right there. Able to get it to Sumter, who was able to finish. So it's 22 to 11. This is the kind of thing, Doris, that has been happening to Villanova. Mm. They've been the victim of these kind of runs. Yeah. And tonight they've turned it around, and Snowden is leading the way. Yeah, I agree. And, you know, usually it's Buchanan, the guy that they feed off of. He makes shots early. I think Snowden may be falling into a leadership role, which would be great for this Villanova Wildcat program. And Buchanan, who had 27 in the first meeting, has not scored so far tonight. But Snowden has made up for that with 10 early points. Remember, his season high is only 15. Mm. So he's off to a great start in the first eight minutes. But a long, long way to go. Off the bench with his two fouls. Smith back in there for Boston College. Sullivan pressures him. Here's Watson. Three-pointer on the way. Off the front of the iron. The follow by Smith is good. Yeah, he got caught down. Gary Buchanan was trying to check him out. That's not enough body on Craig Smith. Forget it. On the outstanding freshman, here's Ray. His penetration leans oh. in and scores. I tell you, I like that young man. He just, he has a real feel for the game understanding of his body excellent body control ball fake three-pointer comes up short Buchanan on the weak side has the rebound 17 of the Wildcat points coming from the combination of Ray and Snowden so the two young men doing a terrific job Snowden gives it up but Sumter decides to back it out Wildcats with 20 on the shot clock reset Buchanan's three it was quick and well off the mark good challenge by BC off that screen Another steal by Snowden, and he'll go all the way and jam it home. Yeah, he's got excellent anticipation skills. Took a lot of criticism last year, Snowden, because of his turnover problem. But he's not a true one. And how about him playing off the basketball defensively and stripping things? Nice read in the passing lane. They've doubled it up. 26-13, Bell tries to cut into it, cannot. Sidney battles for the rebound. Bryant winds up with it. Bell, an open look at a three, and you can forget about that. Yeah, bring the curtain down. He's not going to miss it twice in a row. Not the way he's shooting the basketball. He's got 10. And we have just over 10 minutes remaining in the opening half. A very good start for the Wildcats on the road. Trying to win in a place that has been very unfriendly. They haven't won a game here since the 90s. Yeah, there's not a player on the roster who's ever won in Conti Forum. Sumter's turnaround, too strong. Weak side, it's Bell. Starts back to the Eagles. Stop and go move inside. Oh. Lays it up and in. It's a hard guard, folks. You're going to step up and challenge the three. He'll go right by you on a dribble. It's been special and fun to watch Troy Bell play basketball. 9.43 remaining in the half. Bell brings them back to within eight. So they have, he has scored the last five to cut that 13-point lead back to eight. And how quickly, when he gets the ball in his hands, you don't know whether to come out and challenge because if you do, Doris, see you later. Yeah, I mean, you talk about, you got to, one of the most difficult things to do is you see the meeting from January 22nd. Buchanan ripping off 27 and BC turnover issues early tonight. They had him as well back then. One of the most difficult things to do, I think, in college basketball or any basketball is to challenge jump shooters under control if you've got to recover. And with Bell, a guy who's so good at getting you to, to commit body-wise and then also able to go off the bounce. Next level. 
a point guard who can score. I've got to believe the NBA likes him. I'd have to think so. And credit him for staying all four years at Boston College. Yeah, agreed. Some questions early after winning Rookie of the Year as a freshman, Big East Player of the Year as a sophomore, whether he would stay. There's that long week for Villanova that we were talking about. Four games in four different cities in eight days. And believe me, if they had to play last night, which is when this game was originally scheduled to yeah. be played, was last night, they really would have been dragging. Okay, credit Jay Wright. He said, I'm not going to use that as an excuse. We've got to come out and play no matter what. Buchanan, a quiet start, has not scored. That three is short. Bell has the rebound. Good feed to Sydney, but it's an offensive foul. So it'll be the second on Jermaine Watson. And the technical foul called on Al Skinner. Well, John Cal did not mess around. Called the technical foul. So that's going to give the momentum back to the Wildcats after uh, Troy Bell kind of taking it away. One of the more laid-back gentlemen in all of college basketball. Technical foul early in this one, midway through the first half. And that's unusual for Gary Buchanan. He started slowly because he had to have his knee scoped before the season began. You saw the foul before the feed to Sydney. That got Skinner off the bench and got him a technical. One of two from Buchanan takes us to a timeout. 27-18, the Wildcats maintain their lead over the Eagles, and Al Skinner is still unhappy. Cooper Tire is proud to be the official tire of the Big East Conference. Cooper Tires, don't give up a thing. Now during the National Caravan event, get the best values in America from Dodge. Take our best products like Dodge Caravan, the best-selling minivan ever, with available power sliding doors and power rear hatch. Plus our best warranty, Dodge's fully transferable 770 powertrain limited warranty. Plus our best deal, like up to a $3,500 cash allowance. Or 0% financing for 60 months. Add it all up, it equals the best values in America. See your Dodge dealer or visit Dodge.com. I know people who refuse to settle for good enough. I know people who think working hard is the only way to work. I know people who don't believe in the words overnight success. Let me introduce you. Comcast, proud to be New England's new cable company. At one point, it was a 13-point lead for the Wildcats. That has shrunk a bit. It's down to 27-18, but 9-18 to play in the first half. To a kind of uh, momentum shift, the technical foul is going to bring to this game, if any. Yeah, good ball movement, but you see Randy Foy step in. Jermaine Watson. Cal had it go in that direction the entire way. And what followed was a technical on Al Skinner. And John Cowell was a ways away from Al. Well, you saw where John was. He was in front of the other bench. Yes. Had to look back up at Al Skinner and went up with a technical foul. Mm. So now Foy back on the court, brings it up for the Wildcats. He's on with Alan Ray. Ricky Wright is out there. Buchanan and Sumter, and that's a bad pass from Foy. Easy steal for Bell. Finds Watson. Gets it back to Bell. And this time you've got Alan Ray covering Bell. Good overplay that time by Sumter. And the Wildcats get it back. Boy, too much traffic. There are three white jerseys. He tried to squeeze it down the lane, but the reaction by Smith bats it away. Checking back in with Luis Hennett. We are on the campus of the Eagles of Boston College. Compi Forum here in Chestnut Hill. I'm John Sanders along with Doris Burke. Glad to have you aboard. 
to the rescheduled game, and a good job by Sumter. Curtis playing well off the bench. He's got the six early points. Yeah, he's got excellent size, six, seven, very long, very athletic. Good read there. Here's Bell. Passes on the three. Bryant fade away, spins off, a tip try, no good, second time goes. Yeah, Sydney, one of the better rebounding guards in the country, they'll actually slide to the three with Bennett and Bell on the floor, but you've got to check him off the offensive glass. He averages seven rebounds a game. 8-13 to play, we're in the first half. Critical game for the Wildcats, and of course the Eagles trying to lock up that bye in New York City starting next week. Buchanan, three, again short. He's missed three, and he's missed them all badly. He goes out of bounds. And the Eagles get it back just inside the eight-minute mark. The teams will head to the bench. Sydney stays with the rebound at the offensive end and brings the Eagles closer. They're down nine. Well, mama, don't you make me another meatloaf. Forget the mac and cheese. I want some fun piled on a bus. I want a man which please. Make tonight a man which night. I want a man which please. How much is enough? Now you can decide. Introducing Orville Redenbacher's single serve mini bags. Big Orville taste in a new snacking size. Pick up some Orville Redenbacher's and start bopping today. kids ever dream of being a television sports reporter? Well, this is your chance. AT&T 3 and the Boston Celtics are searching for a cub reporter. If you're between the ages of 13 and 15, tell us in 50 words or less why you'd like to be a sports reporter. If selected, you'll work at a Celtics game, interview players, and edit a story that will air on AT&T 3. Send your entries to Chris Miller at AT&T 3, 8 North Main Street, Attleboro, Mass, 02703. The deadline for entries is March 18th, so don't over by nine that guy probably can remember the last time that Villanova won a game here he's got a long memory let's look at our Conagra Foods Big East standings you see in the east we talked about the importance of this game because Boston College will wind up the regular season against UConn here at Conti Forum this weekend in the west it's Syracuse Pittsburgh Seton Hall has joined that fray and Syracuse matched up against Notre Dame tonight. We'll keep posted on that one as we go along. Lewis Orr's team at 1.7 and 9. You know, you have turned things around in a hurry. And they're not out of the hunt for that bye. And they tried to go back door that time to Smith. He was bumped along the baseline. And the ball went harmlessly out of bounds. The Wildcats get it back. That's a rare miscue for Hinnon. He's really been solid with the basketball. 84 assists, 45 turnovers coming in. So for a freshman, those are excellent numbers. Boy, the freshman with it. Gets it to the freshman right. And there's another freshman, Sumter. They had a terrific recruiting class. And then Frazier is out. But maybe back for the Big East Championship with that stress problem in his foot. Right, works the baseline and scores. Well, we've seen him do that for three years in a row, haven't we? Yeah, true power guy in a pose. So he's got excellent upper body strength. Sydney to Smith. And going to camp, he doesn't look to shoot much. Here's Bell. Working on Buchanan, leans in, floats in, and scores. Yeah, they give him some, some leeway in that flex. I mean, he doesn't have to go off the down street. He may float out as he does there and create on his own. He can improvise. 14 points in the early going for him. <laughs> Leading score for the Wildcats. My goodness. Wow. Sumter had it. Smith ties him up. Possession arrow will keep it at this end. Shot there by Randy Foy with 17 picks. Jay Wright might have been as surprised. Huh? <laughs> Good inside feed, and once again, twice. Lay it in is Sumter. Yes. That's twice, it's twice in a row. What's happened? That's just that's just a guy who's reading what the defense does. So if you overplay out, he steps right to the basket. 
good feel for the game, Mr. Sumter. Sumter with eight off the bench. Alan Ray with seven. So the bench has been productive so far for the Wildcats. Sydney almost left the basketball behind. Working inside. Runner won't go. Tipped back into his hands, but he was out of bounds. He went out of bounds and came back in. And so the Wildcats get it back, up by 11. Yeah, he's a capable rebounder. The floater is his specialty. He does that well, but there he was out, comes in, and there's the whistle to Jack. And we had an official right in front of us, of course, just slipped on some of the water that's leaking from the roof. It was Brian Kersey. Here's Buchanan, again off the mark. Easy rebound for Smith. Yeah, Brian Kersey looking down on the floor, and he's sort of making sure he stepped off the court. That can be dangerous. Cannon, as he has been, struggling with his shooting. Smith with the offensive rebound, powers his way inside wow. and scores. And this is a man who can adjust his body. He's deceptive in his ability to move and adjust in the air. This meeting between these two teams, Villanova had five players in double figures, and that's the last time that's happened. And showed you to Bingham, they're three and seven since that meeting. Just the opposite for the Eagles, who are eight and two. Here's Buchanan. Here's Bell. You will not catch him. Sumter's going to try and draws the foul. Boy, you can see that coming. Yes. Didn't you? <laughs> this guy gets to the free throw line nine times a game. Troy Bell knows how to finish in the open floor. Well, I'll tell you, the Wildcats should know about him because this is a senior who's averaging 20, over 25 points a game against them yes. in his career. Yep. Now, when Craig Smith gets it, he's going baseline. I mean, this gentleman just loves the baseline. If you cut him off on that right shoulder, you'd be in better shape. And then the turnover, Bell is the recipient of being in the right place at the right time. And then Sumter, freshman mistake. Well, the way Troy Bell's going, does I don't think there's any doubt that he's going to break this season scoring average yes. in the conference this year. He's going to get a blow right now. And he's earned it. 17 points for Bell. His running mate Smith also chipping in six, including that strong offensive rebound. Well, what do you do with your team? So you concede him, and you want to make him take difficult shots, but concede that he's going to get 25 and shut everybody else down. I don't know what the best way to handle this basketball team is. Well, right now, there might not be a good way. Yes. However, the Wildcats had that early run, got it going, and Foy with a good look that time from the baseline. That's Randy's first basket. Good crossover driven by Foy. He and Ray both possess a nice crossover. And they'll go without Bell right now. Watson starts to move. Hinnett will shoot the three. Short. Good rebound by Sumter. He's having a good first half. Here's Wright. Pushed from behind, goes back up and scores. Wow, good recognition of where you on, are on the floor. Boy, don't things come easier for Villanova when you're out and running? And Bell's not going to sit very long. The team is beginning to make a move, the Eagles. There's Hinnett alone on the baseline, foul. The foul is going to go on... Uh, Alan Ray picks up his first. Now Villanova out and running. Randy Foy, pass on the money. He definitely takes a left hand from Ryan Sidney, but able to finish it nonetheless. First point tonight for Hennett. Now Skinner in the midst of this eight and two run over the last ten games. Outside of Bell, what has happened? He said, "Well, Bell's been obviously a huge part of what's happened." He said, "But the people around him, Dorna Camp, has stepped up at times and given him some good minutes. Watson, 17 in their last outing. So other guys contributing." 37-29, and of course, Villanova helping to maintain its lead with the good work inside by Wright. Despite the push, gets the basket. The Cats have the lead. Get the best values in America from Dodge. Take our best products like Dodge Ram Heavy Duty, the 250 horsepower Intrepid SXT, the best-selling minivan ever, and the VA-powered Durango. Plus our best warranty, Dodge's fully transferable 770 powertrain limited warranty. 
plus our best deals, like up to a $4,500 cash allowance or 0% financing on most models. Add it all up, and it equals the best values in America. See your Dodge dealer or visit Dodge.com. <laughs> Hey kids, ever dream of being a television sports reporter? Well, this is your chance. AT&T 3 and the Boston Celtics are searching for a cub reporter. If you're between the ages of 13 and 15, tell us in 50 words or less why you'd like to be a sports reporter. If selected, you'll work at a Celtics game, interview players, and edit a story that will air on AT&T 3. Send your entries to Chris Miller at AT&T 3, 8 North Main Street, Attleboro, Mass, 02703. The deadline for entries is March 18th, so don't delay. At vhicks.com, you can see if the car you want comes in the color you want. Put on different wheels and see the difference in price. Change the cloth interior to a leather interior. Upgrade to a bigger stereo. Can you afford heated seats? vhicks.com will tell you. Need a tow package? Add a tow package. Try the online configurator at vhicks.com. vhicks.com, roadmap to the automotive world. Villanova put on a run early in this first half and has led most of the way up right now 37 to 29 and Bell just marching closer to some unbelievable territory in scoring in the Big East. Second all time. Lawrence Moten, however, has 12 more games played than Troy Bell. So if you were to give him 12 at 27 points, which he's averaged this season, he'd blow Lawrence Moten away in terms of career scoring. May yet catch him. We'll see. He'd have to do some serious work. He needs 54 more points. Could do that. Has 17 already. Foy gets loose along the baseline. I think he expected some contact. Didn't get it. Sullivan goes back up and scores. And Sullivan gets his first basket. Well, Foy turns the corner. I mean, he and Ray can go off the bounce extremely well. Thought he was going to get the roll. Sullivan keeps it alive. And then good patience in there. Feels people around him. Make sure he's gathered. Power up. The foul was on Andrew Bryant. Gets his first. Seven different Wildcats already in the score sheet for tonight. The three-point play for Sullivan. Boosted back to an 11-point lead. Been up by as many as 13, hanging around the 10 point mark most of the time. Tried to go back door and it was almost tipped up and in that time by Sumter, but quickly Foy back the other way. Buchanan, a good look at a three that oh, time, nice. much better. Good defense. I just well scouted that box set where they want Bell on the flare screen. It's red all the way, and it again. Villanova, when they get easy points, they look so much better. Transition is where they're at their best. 30-second timeout as the lead all of a sudden goes back to 14. So the biggest lead so far in the first half belongs to the Wildcats. And they're not playing like they're playing four games in eight days. Right. This off the box set. And then he comes from the bottom, eventually gets the handle. And the flare screen, he wants to fade off that on the screen by Bryant. But boy, Villanova well scouted. It turns the other direction. And Mr. Buchanan may be getting going. Now that's the best look that he's had and he's kind of forced his other three-point attempts so far. And when he gets hot, the Wildcats are at their best because that opens up everybody else. Now there's the points off turnovers and a lot of this, you know, you break out, you get an easy look on the opposite end, the confidence goes up. But Alan Ray, Randy Foy, both those guys, and Curtis Sumter, the young guys, they flourish in that open floor. And a little more water on the court. I'm not sure there's a leak there. The one in front of us is the one that they have been most concerned about and has been mopping continually. Basically on every exchange, Doris, they come out and mop up the water. And it's supposed to, as it turns colder, although it's maybe not going to be as cold as it has been tonight. No, exactly. So it may not freeze. Dean DiFilippo, the athletic director here at Boston College, and that's what he was talking about. Usually when the temperature drops, this is not a problem, but... Bell looks for help. Bryant with it. Sydney for three. That's an air ball, but Smith to the rescue. Missed it. 
Sumter uses his strength to try to drag it out of there. The possession error will keep it at this end. Boy, he's starting to rebound with authority, Curtis Sumter. And what you like is that he's rebounding the basketball in traffic. Got an excellent wingspan, Curtis Sumter. 67205, a reminder. We'll talk about the Dodge Tough Player of the Week. Check out the Big East Wire. You might see some familiar faces on the Big East Wire tonight. Mm. Player of the Year candidates. There's a young man in the freshman class who certainly has got to get consideration. Carmelo Anthony, what a year for him. Here's Bryant from straight away. Too strong. But wow. again, Smith with that strength underneath. And he'll get a chance for his three-point play. The foul is going to go on Sumter. It'll be his first. Eight points now for Craig Smith. And boy, using the power game inside. Well, I feel like this is very John Canone-esque. Use a nice big body to create space. And despite bodies around you, you're just bigger and stronger. Cannot finish. 64% foul shooter. 43-31. Just over two and a half. Boy, with penetration softly off the glass. Yes. In their mentality, both he were attack. Let's go score early. Wildcats have led most of the way. And there's a steal by four. And he gets tied up, so that will send it down to the other end. It'll be Villanova basketball, and Sullivan returns to the Wildcat lineup. And Sumter, who's played well here in the first half, will get a blow. That's right. You know, he passed after the Virginia Tech game when they gave up 57 second half points. So he said, Listen, I'm not going to read my guys' riot act. I've talked all year about inconsistencies, bringing it every single night on every play. That's something that takes time. You're trying to develop a culture in just your second year at Villanova. Sullivan. Boy, this is a three. Too strong. Sydney has it. Bell races with him. Bell will get it on the feed and hit it. Uh, good on selfish play. Uh, certainly, Sydney, their best passer by far. Leads him in assist almost five a game. And he does it a lot of different ways. I mean, he can pass it in transition. He can handle it in the open floor. He's struggling offensively, so nice job to give it up. And Bell not struggling tonight. He's got 19 points in the first half. The lead is 12. 15 on the shot clock. A good quick move by Foy to get inside and kick it to the corner. Raise three, too strong. Right in the right spot is Ricky. Yeah, it's Sullivan keeping it alive. Nice job. This is Sydney. Smith will go to the line. That'll be the third foul on Sullivan. Sydney out in transition, part. two on one. Yeah, nice adjustment. Boy, it looked like he was below the backboard there for part of the time. And then well, there's actually two BC players who tip it to Ricky Wright. Two for Smith, and it was the second foul on Andrew Sullivan. Look at those arms. He does not look like a freshman, this young man. Big upper body. 6'7", 265. Out of Worcester Academy from Los Angeles. Looking for double figures. Hinnett checks back in for BC. And back to the bench goes Jermaine Watson. Camp is going to replace Smith. Remember, Smith got the two quick fouls in the first five minutes of the half. He sat for a while, but he played very well, Doris, since coming back on. He's got 10 points now. He has, and the challenge for a young guy is to make sure you play under control. As you see, Syracuse all eight-point advantage over the Irish early. Game is in the second half, and that's a critical game for Notre Dame. They need that win at home after losing to UConn at home for their first loss at home this year. There's a nice trap by BC. It's out of bounds, and the Eagles get the turnover. Smith will come back for the offensive end. So right now, Al Skinner using offense-defense substitution in the closing 44 seconds of the first half. 
Trying to narrow that lead. It's 47-35, a dozen right now. Bryant for three. That one's short. Sydney with a rebound. And the power move inside again by Smith, who's got a dozen. Another outstanding pass from Sydney. Second assist. Cut the lead to 10. He had 19 points in the first meeting between these two teams. And there's Wright again. Got inside, went to the left hand. He's got 11. Bell races back, puts up the three. Too strong. The rebound, Sullivan at the horn. 49-37 is our halftime score. There are the numbers for Villanova. They have not lost when they lead at half, and they do have the advantage here by 12. Terrific first half uh, for Snowden off the bench, Sumter. We will start our halftime activities when we come back after this. This shot was a cop and a piece of hurling history. What must be going through that young man's head? Young man's head. Got what it takes to be a champion. 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 Ticketmaster. When we come back, we're going to keep mopping the floor. Also, check out some highlights of the first half. This matchup between Villanova and BC. What can you learn at Boston College? That I can make a difference. To act responsibly. To believe in justice. To make the world a better place. To make wise choices. To make the most of every opportunity. To strive to excel. A Jesuit education can transform your view of the world. Boston College, ever to excel. Hey kids, ever dream of being a television sports reporter? Well, this is your chance. AT&T 3 and the Boston Celtics are searching for a cub reporter. If you're between the ages of 13 and 15, tell us in 50 words or less why you'd like to be a sports reporter. If selected, you'll work at a Celtics game, interview players, and edit a story that will air on AT&T 3. Send your entries to Chris Miller at AT&T 3, 8 North Main Street, Attleboro, Mass, 02703. The deadline for entries is March 18th, so don't delay. TV Superstation. Played on one of the premier courses in New England. It has some of the top golfers from the best courses. In a two-man single elimination skills competition. The 16th annual Morrison Cabot Golf Classic from Snow Acres Country Club, exclusively on AT&T 3, New England's TV Superstation. Duncan Dunnett's Hometown Sports is the program that takes the most comprehensive look at high school athletics in Massachusetts, New Hampshire, and Connecticut. Every show presents fantastic highlights and profiles on some of the area's best players, coaches, and teams. Each week, we feature the biggest games, the best plays, and the finest student athletes. Not to mention detailed analysis from the Boston Globe's Bob Holmes. Watch Dunkin' Donuts Hometown Sports on AT&T 3, New England TV's Superstation. The Eagles down at the half by 12. It's 49-37. And uh, if the Wildcats can hang on and win this game, they're certainly not out of the hunt as far as the East is concerned or a bye in New York City. Still, all kinds of crazy things could happen, but it was... Uh, some terrific defense and an 18-2 run by Villanova that has 
giving him the cushion. Let's take a look at our Hyundai first half highlights. Plenty to be decided in the Big East and plenty to be decided in the next 20 minutes. Early on, it was Snowden who did a nice job getting in passing lanes and finishing in transition. Villanova, 61%. Why? Well, they were getting excellent shots because of their defense. Transition points were plentiful for Villanova in that first half. And, of course, just like the first meeting, Boston College relied heavily on Troy Bell. Bell trying to keep him in the basketball game. He had 19 first half points, did in a lot of different ways. Sydney, one of his three assists, transition bucket for Bell there. But it wasn't enough, and the Wildcats do have the lead. BC on trying to come back in the second half. 49-37 is our score. We've got more coming up after this. A Hyundai Sonata. Air conditioning, automatic transmission, 10-year, 100,000-mile warranty, side airbags. Do I need them? Look out! Side airbags. When you get a Hyundai Sonata starting at just 16,524, including America's best warranty, 10 years, 100,000 miles, you win. Right now, get a 2003 Sonata with zero money down and zero payment for 90 days. I came to this country from Guadalupe when I was 12. It took a while to adjust, but playing soccer helped ease the transition. I look back now at how much some of the older kids helped me, and now it's my turn to give back to them. Soccer is our common bond, but I also want them to understand the importance of a good education. Scoring goals and winning soccer games is a big thrill, but that thrill doesn't last very long. A good education lasts a lifetime. I was scared of myself, with negative thoughts, I couldn't socialize with people. It would escalate into these gripping panic attacks where I, I couldn't breathe and my hands would sweat and my heart would pound. I didn't know who I was anymore. I didn't know what I liked anymore. The person that I knew was gone. I went to my doctor and he put me on anti-anxiety medication, but I just knew it wasn't the answer because I still had these terrible negative thoughts going through my head. I didn't know that there was actually anything wrong with me, I just knew I was depressed and I thought that's what life is about, that's how you're supposed to be. Do you ever have sudden feelings of panic or fear? Do you ever feel like you might lose control? Are you sometimes overwhelmed with worry, anxiety, or depression? I'm Lucinda Bassett, founder of the Midwest Center for Stress and Anxiety, and I suffered with anxiety, depression, and panic attacks for over 20 years. I was afraid of my thoughts, of losing control, of death and dying. I was consumed with worry, but I didn't know that these were some of the symptoms of anxiety and depression. I believe I suffered with anxiety all those years so that I could help other people do what I've done, recover completely. Our program has helped hundreds of thousands of people when other methods of help have failed. I've produced a tape that will show you the amazing results others have achieved and how you can control your anxiety and depression. Medication isn't the long-term answer, and living with constant worry and fear is exhausting. Call now to receive your free tape, 1-888-ANXIETY. That's 1-888-ANXIETY. It's just made a tremendous difference on how I approach life, how I approach people. If anybody's out there that can benefit from this program, if they even think they can, then I really do recommend it because it, it saved my life. It has changed my life completely. I learned all these skills to take care of myself. I know that this will help you because it has helped me tremendously. I'm just getting so much more out of life on a daily basis, and it gave me my life back. Call the number on your screen. Someone who understands what you're going through is waiting to take your call right now. Well, good crowd on hand, but the home team is losing at halftime. Their five-game winning streak isn't in jeopardy. One of the problems for Villanova, the team shooting under 40% in their last three games. Look at those numbers, Doris. That has turned around dramatically in the first half. And a lot of that 19 points off turnovers meant easy baskets. They were getting out using that athleticism in their underclasses to get some point production. Boston College had 14 baskets in the first half. 12 of them came from Bell and Smith. Mm. So that has been the situation. They haven't gotten a lot from Sydney so far, Ryan had only that one basket. Buchanan, just the one basket, a three-pointer. And there are the leading scores. Bell with 19. Snowden, who really didn't play that many minutes in the first half, wound up with a big first half offensively. Just eight it's minutes. It's amazing. He played eight minutes. Points. Yeah, I thought it was his emotional spurt early. He was excited now, quick double. And he keyed that 18 to two run with some terrific defensive plays. Bell draws traffic. Jorna Camp gets it inside. Smith goes up with a short jumper. Rattles out. 
held ball on the rebound, but a good job that time by Andrew Sullivan just to get a piece of that one. Yeah, it looked like Sydney had inside position, just couldn't come down with the board. Sydney had five rebounds in the first half, so he did a nice job getting to the glass. Here's that one, two, two, three quarter trap, and they're gonna look for traps right about there. Here's Snowden. That's kicked, it'll be a new 35 for the Wildcats who have the lead. A win tonight for Villanova would put them in a tie with Boston College. Now keep in mind that down the road, you've still got another game to go between Utah and BC, and that time an easy one for Buchanan inside as he gets the scoring going in the second half. And they have now matched their biggest lead of the night up by 14. A couple of different 14-point leads in the first half as Buchanan picks up his second foul. The thing is, Villanova is not out of the picture despite their recent slump, Doris. They're very much in it. Oh, there's no question. One win tonight. They get to the nine mark that Connecticut and Boston College have ahead of them. And another quick foul. So Buchanan becomes the first player with three as he picks up two in a row. You see the RPI is 62. Talking to Jay today, he says, you know, I'm not surprised that we're 8-6 and six in conference play. I am surprised at the way we got here. Yes. <laughs> they opened 5-0, and oh, and then they have struggled in their last 10 games. Now, and he, he has talked about the inconsistencies that they've had defensively at times, the lapses, the turnovers that have plagued them. And he's talked about it all year. He said it just happened to bite us at the end of the season. I'm not sure what John Cowell is checking at the scorer's table. They're checking to see if it's a three or a two. It's a two. So it won't be the 63rd time. He cannot be surprised. Did you see Gary Buchanan's reaction? He actually looks surprised that they called a foul. <laughs> Bell could not get up. Now, the way we look at it, where his foot was, it's going to be two shots at the line yes. instead of three. Mm -hmm. But how many places do they keep a stat of how a guy has done in his career when he's been fouled shooting a three-pointer. Yeah. This has got to be one of the few. Mm. I think they're going to come over and use our monitor. Indeed, they are. Sure you can. Well, John Cowell has joined us. He said the picture over there wasn't good, so if we can roll this tape, you'll soon get the... You see the same thing that John is looking at right now. It's a two, yeah. We knew that all the time, didn't yes, we, Yes, we did. <laughs> <laughs> Could just ask us. We'd have told them. No bias here at Not the table. We, we needed the second look, of course. <laughs> yeah, we have that advantage, don't we? <laughs> <laughs> It'll be two shots for Bell. He was two of two at the line in the first half. Oh, what a career this young man has had. smooth and makes it look easy his career free throw percentage outstanding well they actually managed to get his bio and his information on one page i'm not sure how they do that with all the stuff that he has done in four years small print <laughs> small for me at times <laughs> 51 39 bell gets a pair at the line gets the scoring going for the eagles and their fans now trying to get something going and it's going to start at the defensive end I think the leak's getting worse, boy. Yeah, it certainly appears to be coming down faster. Here's Foy. He'll shoot a three from straight away. Look at the hustle by Bell. He'll take it in and lay it home. He just wanted that more than anybody else out there. Yeah, he's got a great burst of speed to him, Troy Bell. They were in a little something different defensively. I'm not quite sure what it was, honestly. There was some communication. It looked like they started in a 3-2 or a 1-2-2, whatever you want to call this zone look. I tell you, he, he, his eyes got big. He saw that ball. He used that speed. And there was nobody going to catch him. So he is having a terrific night at 23. Buchanan 4-3, and he drills it. Yeah, actually just a man-to-man -man where they're exchanging every screen, and they sacked off. I'm not sure why Ryan Sidney wouldn't be up in the chest of Buchanan. Here's Sidney. His three is an air ball, but Hinnick keeps it alive for the Eagles. He's fouled. It looks like Foy, and Hinnett might have been hurt because Foy came down on his leg. Yeah, Pearl Hess reacted to that swiftly. I think he saw that. 
Well, the foul is on Foy, and watch him roll on the ankle right here. Oh. Foy was on top of him. He's apparently all right. Bell for three. Yes, sir. Wow, he's deep. Folks, deep. And Snowden had a hand up. That is his fourth three-pointer of the evening. He's got 26 points. Ten-point difference. We're going to have a three-point shooting contest between Buchanan and Bell. All alone is right off the nice feed, but he missed the shot. Here comes Bell. It's one on five right now. So shoot a three. Short. Smith with the offensive rebound. Powers his way up, missed the shot. Hinnett couldn't handle it. Snowden does. Kicks it off to Cannon for three. So Bell has scored all seven of the Eagles' points in the second half. They're down by ten. Inside Smith. Turnaround. Good. He's got such nice touch and a good feel. I mean, you refer to that as eyes in the backside because he's using that to peel defenders and then roll off them. That was nice. His total stands now at 14. The lead is down to eight. And that's as close as the Eagles have been for a while. Foy got inside. He turned it over. Double dribble. Just lost control for a moment, and it cost him. Yeah. He tried to split. Dornikian hedged hard, forced him to go between them. Just a poor decision by Foy. So now the Eagles with more work to be done. Bell working on Snowden. Smith crashes inside. It's an offensive foul, no basket. That's number three on Smith. Made up his mind, Doris. He was going to go to the hole. Yeah. Well, he shot the turnaround the last possession. Wow. Oh. It was close. It was. Maybe the fact that he knocked down two guys. <laughs> Perhaps. <laughs> Perhaps. Like this, he scores and just like Bell. He's going to hurt you in a variety of ways. Wildcats get it back. This is Foy. Sumter on the drive, and they exchange offensive foul. That's the second on Curtis. The closest the Eagles have been since 347 of the first half. And they made a little run and got back to within eight. That one pretty clear cut. Uh, Sumter was going baseline. He's got excellent quickness. Where the upside on Sumter is outstanding. Didn't need a bell. Inside, Smith with a jam. Uh, smart, see, he's on selfish Bell. I mean, he's gonna score when you need him to score, but he understood they were coming with a double right away, and so he releases it quickly before the double can come. That's just smart basketball. The lead down to six. Boy spins inside. Snowden, good spin move to the baseline. Sumter for three. Picked up and in. That was Buchanan skying in there. He's got 11. Eight point lead. Bell pulls up. Now Smith. Sydney for three. Short. Look at Smith. Go back up and in and foul. Oh, wow. Technical foul called on the Villanova bench. The basket count. The foul was on right. And Smith has electrified this crowd and gotten the Eagles right back in the ball game. It's been Bell and Smith to the rescue. Well, watch Smith. He's light on his feet for a guy that size. Tips it to himself, powers up. That contact is there. And then the technical foul on Jay Wright. 27 points for Bell. And we'll have a free throw by Smith. So each coach has been charged with a technical. Each has been called by John Cowell, and each time, Doris, he didn't hesitate. No. 
So six of six for Troy at the line, and now Smith will shoot one. A chance to make it a three-point game right here. This would be a five-point play. You know, you get in the crowd. This is the Boston College team that can get some energy in this building. Capacity about 86, and we probably got close to eight. Smith gets the bounce and the basket. He's got 19 points. They come to their feet at County Forum. The Eagles are on a roll here in the second half, battling their way back thanks to the play of Bell and Smith. Boston College has cut the lead to three. A Hyundai Sonata. Air conditioning, automatic transmission, 10-year, 100,000-mile warranty, side airbags. Do I need them? Look out! When you get a Hyundai Sonata starting at just 16,524, including America's best warranty, 10 years, 100,000 miles, you win. Right now, get a 2003 Sonata with zero money down and zero payments for 90 days. The male can often find himself in precarious situations. It is funny. Yeah. So how many dogs have you, you know... Okay. <laughs> Great. Rolling Rock Beer. Grab a rock. Hey, kids, ever dream of being a television sports reporter? Well, this is your chance. AT&T 3 and the Boston Celtics are searching for a cub reporter. If you're between the ages of 13 and 15, tell us in 50 words or less why you'd like to be a sports reporter. If selected, you'll work at a Celtics game, interview players, and edit a story that will air on AT&T 3. Send your entries to Chris Miller at AT&T 3, 8 North Main Street, Attleboro, Mass, 02703. The deadline for entries is March 18th, so don't delay. The date is March 4. There are two games remaining in the regular season, and I guess that uh, is one reason we shouldn't be surprised that each team's been charged with a technical foul. Yeah, file. yeah. You know, it's interesting. When the technical was called, Jay looked at his guys on the bench, Freddie Hill, Joe Jones, Billy Lang, and he just, they looked surprised whether Jay was reacting to his guys on the floor it's not what, what John Cal heard. And a 15 to 4 run right now for Boston College. And this is as close as they have been since the early moments of this game. Snowden tries to quiet the crowd, cannot. Sydney going up with right for the rebound, and the possession arrow will send it back to the other end. Sydney backs down from no one. Giving no, up some not. size, both length and width girth-wise, but he does not back away. I am Sydney has just one basket tonight. And he's out there scrapping. He's just not shot it well. Now you look at his percentage of what he had improved upon a season ago was his perimeter shooting. That has gone by the wayside this year. Well, the big first half for Villanova, they scored 49 points. I think offense has been a struggle for them lately. Here's Bell to the baseline. Jumper. Good. Wow. 30 points for Troy Bell. You've seen it all. Transition, threes, now that mid-range pull-up jumper, pull-up before the defense can get any assistance, smart. Now that 14-point lead is gone. It's down to one. We've got ourselves a basketball game here in Boston. Sumter, the dump down to right. Back outside, Ray bumps, keeps his dribble to the baseline, goes up. What a wow. move. And he is fouled on the play. Terrific by Alan Ray. Ray and Floyd both have very good strength. 6'2", 6'3", 175, and 185. And then just great body control here. Has to adjust. Dorna Camp is long. And the adjustment on the baseline. He went around three white jerseys to get himself here. So Ray can't finish off the three-point play as Bryant has the rebound. So Alan Ray misses his first free throw opportunity. The lead is three. Sydney to Hinnon. Now Bell, stolen, almost stolen that time by the freshman four as he knocks it out of bounds. 22 on the shot clock. And look at the numbers in the second half. Bell and Smith, 18 points. They've done it all so far for BC. There's 
in it. Look to Bell. That's where they like the flare screen. There it is. Dornick Camp sets it and Bell wide open. Comes up short. Foy with a rebound. Working on Sidney. Kicks it out for Snowden's three. Bending no good. And the rebound by him underneath. Couldn't get the roll that time. They set Bell in a lot of different areas on the floor. Sometimes on the bottom side of the box. Sydney off that baseline. Straightaway jumper is good. That's Andrew Bryant. The junior has brought him even at 58. Well, BC has come storming back in the first six and a half minutes of the second half, and they have gotten even. Andrew Bryant, a 39% three-point shooter. That's a big one. 58, 58, 13, 34 left. Manchester Monarchs battle the Springfield Falcons Saturday, March 8th at 7.30 p.m. on AT&T 3, New England's TV Superstation. Okay, let's compare our favorite cars. I like this one. It doesn't have split rear seats. That's an option here, but a standard option there. VHICS.com isn't the only way to compare cars side by side. What's a standard option? Just the smartest. Does that have the six-cylinder engine? Uh, where's it talk about the engine? VX.com, roadmap to the automotive world. The last time BC had the lead, we were a minute and a half into the game. Six and a half into the second half, they finally come all the way back to tie it up, Doris. Well, and you know what's happening now? You, you're starting to pay a lot of attention to Bell and other guys, in particular Craig Smith has started to get some shots. And Andrew Bryant, you can fall asleep as you see BC's tournament resume. Certainly, if performance down the stretch has anything to do with it, there and it is usually good shape. does. Yes, yes. The committee will look at that. If everybody in America thinks they're on the committee, they all make their selections. Sullivan works his way underneath, kicks it out. Ray's three is good. No, it's a two. It is a two for Alan Ray. He's got 11 points. Four players now for the Wildcats in double figures. Remember when they defeated BC in January, they had five players in double figures, and there's a bump and a foul call on Alan Ray, his second. And we're in the one and one. Wow, with a long way to go. A long, long way to go. Buchanan is back, Foy to the bench. But Sydney has not been a very good free throw shooter this year. And when he misses the front end, Bryant that time was scrambling to keep it alive, and he touched it last. So Little Noble will get it back as Jermaine Watson returns to the BC lineup. And it goes to the bench. But you can't fault the effort of Bryant there trying to keep it alive. No, great hustle. The man is. Endured some personal tragedy. Bryant lost his mom earlier this year. Missed the Miami game here at home. Snowden against the pressure. They handle it. Sullivan. A little hesitation. And he looks at Buchanan like Gary didn't move where he was supposed to. Yeah, some frustration there. He barks at Buchanan to step up. You have to get the right guys handling the basketball against that 1-2-2. Work off Dornicamp. He looks low. Bell, three-pointer. 
It's too strong. Buchanan has the rebound. Three on three right now. Gary will look for some help. Alan Ray with a move. Stops for a jumper. Too strong. Watson the rebound. Back from the Eagles. He's got Sydney ahead of him on the far wing. Instead has to call a timeout. No place to go. Yeah, good deny by Gary Buchanan. Stepping up into the chest of Troy Bell, not allowing him to receive the pass. It is a 30-second timeout. See what else is happening? You can see a four-point win for Syracuse at Notre Dame. That is a huge win for the Orange. So they improved their record, still only three conference losses. Oklahoma, number five, is winning at home against Nebraska. Texas over Kansas State by a dozen. The 12th tournament will be a dandy one. Oh, <laughs> that will be outstanding. T.J. Ford of Texas had a sensational freshman year, improved as a sophomore. For Syracuse, 22 wins now, John, against four losses, 12 wins top the Big East West Division standings. What outstanding freshman McNamara and Anthony. Just a great freshman season for Jim Behan. Smith sitting, getting set to check back in as Bryant hits his second three in a row. Andrew Bryant with another three. And the Eagles have their first lead since it was 5-3 in the first minute and a half of the game. How about that? I see, Bell will lower you to sleep in some ways because they're so focused on him. You cannot allow Bryant to go off. He's a capable shooter. Snowden tried to go to the baseline and was held on the way in. That's Jermaine Watson picking up the foul. That's his third. But Bryant, a couple of big threes, and the Eagles have the lead. It's 61 to 60. And they can thank the junior from Texas, Andrew Bryan, for bringing him back, putting him on top by one. Now with all-wheel drive for 318 a month, only through March. All this week on Dunkin' Donuts Hometown Sports, it's the high school version of March Madness, the holy grail for young athletes, and this is the place to turn toward the personalities, the exciting plays, and the stories that make school sports so special. Don't miss our tournament coverage this week on Double DHTS. Tune in and watch your hometown stars shine. Only on AT&T 3, New England's TV Superstation. Manchester Monarchs panel of Springfield Falcons, Saturday, March 8th at 7.30 p.m. on at and 3, New England TV Superstation. Well, the Eagles have come all the way back to take the lead, and let's check out our BMW ultimate drive of the game and watch Troy Bell. He's the one who wants it the most right here. Yeah, he has been aggressive from the get-go. Boy, and Buchanan hesitates, and he takes advantage. He who hesitates is lost. Troy Bell did not. Gets an easy deuce. It has been the combination of Smith and Bell doing most of the damage with the big assist from Andrew Bryant, who has those two three-pointers here in the second half. DC on top by one. Still a lot of time left. Wright gets inside and is fouled. Smith can't believe it. And that's four. That's a big one now. You've yeah, got a decision. That is a big one. Yeah, you have to get, get off the bench. Looks at Al Skinner. It says four, so Dorna Camp will check in. Let's see. Ricky Wright tries to go to the middle. Left hand is... Well, if it's a foul, it's a touch foul. But it is number four. 
Craig has fouled out of three games this year, and he has to go to the bench here with 11 and a half minutes left. Sullivan inside draws the foul. No, it's a turnover. They got the travel before the foul on Dornicamp, so the Eagles get it back with a chance to add to a lead and a smile, kind of a wry smile on the face of Jay Wright. Turnover's evening out. Here's Bell inside Sydney, thrown away, tapped away, I believe that time, by Derek Snowden. Watson off the set play. Into the lane, short with a runner, gets it back. Missed that time. Dornicamp missed the tip. It goes out of bounds. And the Eagles will keep it. Here comes Sumter back to the lineup, along with Foy for Villanova. And Sullivan back to the bench. Jim Ray back to the bench for the Wildcats. They had as much as a 14-point lead here in the second half, and now they trail by one. Watson to Bryant. Watson, another three. Got it. Nine points for Bryant here in the second half. That's his third three-pointer in a row, and it's a four-point lead. For a guy his size, his feet are really close together, and he brings down rain. He puts so much underneath those threes. Good feed inside, but not able to finish that time was right. And the foul goes on Dornicamp. I've got three on Nate. He steps out. He's just reading what the defense gives him. And Sumter has twice now been burned for long distance threes by Bryant. For Ricky Wright to try to slice into that lead at the line. Does. That's his first point, though, in the second half. Now, these are the points in the game where you've just got to be mentally tough. Uh, it can go one way or the other. And typically, the more experienced team has a little more edginess from a mentality standpoint, and that's what wins games. I think you saw that in the Pittsburgh, Connecticut game over the weekend. And just perhaps a little bit more experienced mental toughness. Bell draws three defenders. Going to camp to Watson. Watson from the baseline, short. Nice rebound, Bryant. Put back, no good. Wright has the rebound. Ahead to Buchanan. Cruises in, up the glass, missed. Follow, no good. Going to camp the rebound. Three on two. Bryant, another three. This one's going to be an air ball. The boy threw it right to Going to camp, who scores and is fouled. Sumter with a foul. Dornicamp's first basket of the night. Well, here's the transition opportunity missed by Villanova. Sumter looked like he got a pretty good look at it. Dornicamp boards it, and he's going to run the floor. It'll pay dividends for him. The long air ball, Foy falling out of bounds, saves it in a tough area to try to save it. And they were in the right spot at the right time. Buchanan goes back to the bench along with Sumter. Sullivan returns along with Ray. It's a good opportunity for them to get this floor because it is dripping yes, rapidly is. in front of us. There's been no let up. No, missed free throw on an outlet pass here in this direction. It is a missed free throw, but Sydney is there. I think Sullivan even deflected that one on the way up. Just the second field goal for Ryan Sidney, and all of a sudden it's a six-point lead. Yeah, and I don't know whether it's fatigue for Villanova or whether the air has come out of their sails, but they certainly have lost some energy here in the last couple minutes. They had a terrific first half. Bryant will be called for the foul from behind as Ricky Wright tried to step through, and that's the second foul on Andrew. 68-62. The Eagles have the lead. We're not in a bonus situation at this end of the court yet. We are at the other end. Hey. 
Boyd. Back fell inside. Kick it out to Ray. Still 20 on the shot clock, so a lot of time left. They go back out to Ray. He penetrates. Sullivan down the baseline. We'll go to the foul line. It's going to be the first foul tonight on Ryan Sidney. A little better execution there for Villanova, taking it to the third and fourth options. Sullivan, one for one at the line in the first half. We'll have a pair here. Wildcats have had two chances at the line in the second half, Doris, and they missed both. Sydney to the bench for BC. Just over nine minutes left. That one rattles out. Watson on the move. Offensive foul. Jermaine got out of control and picked up his fourth foul. Yeah, and this is a guy that flourishes when things are unstructured, but he can allow his energy and enthusiasm for competing to hurt him at times. Four fouls on Watson. Smith is on the bench with four fouls. And as thin as the Eagles are, they cannot afford to have a lot of players foul out. Looking for right, makes the catch, goes up, reverses and scores, and we'll go to the line. Yeah, just a Big East four-year player who understands how to score with contact. And you've got to be able to catch it and take some contact in traffic. The ability to score, good strength, good reverse. The foul was on Hinnon and right for the three-point play. Keaton Blank at the line in the second half. Eagles by four. Bell has been quiet for a few minutes, and he'll get a chance to shoot three. No got him. Bell will go to the line. I don't think there was any question that he was going to shoot that ball. He had not touched it in a few possessions. So quick with that release, Doris. Mm. Just tough to get to. Yes. Snowden got the word for that. 31 points for Bell. So seven 30 point games now in his last dozen. numbers would be down. He's averaging almost four assists per game to go along with that. Four and a half boards. Second time tonight. 63rd in his career. And the 32nd time that he has made all three of those free throws. Now has 33. This is the biggest lead of the night for the Eagles. Boy tries to answer. Gets baseline. Missed the shot. Right with a follow. He'll go to the line. Al is on Dornicamp, and that's his fourth. So he becomes the third player for BC with four fouls. You mentioned that their rotation is short. They'll play seven. Does he get it clean? Boy gets the angle turned, gets a shoulder square. Could have gone either way. Well, I think it's certainly Villanova after the, the good challenge by Snowden on the previous possession where it didn't look like he'd get a lot of belt. Dornicamp, Smith, Watson, all with four fouls for the Eagles. His right gets two at the line, has 17 points in the game. The lead is five. I guess the question is, with four games in eight days, do the Wildcats have enough left to come back? Here's Hinnon to Dornican. Sit back to Bell. Hanging? Wow. <laughs> what an athletic shot that was. 
but Snowden wins the battle at the other end. He'll get two. That was an easy deuce because Bell had flattened everybody. He wanted the one-on-one -on -one isolation up top, but he was a safety guy. 71-68, it is a three-point game. We still have 7.51 to go here at Chestnut Hill. Stay with us. The male can often find himself in precarious situations. It is funny. So how many girls have you, you know? Have you ever had any girls? Seriously? Me too. Okay. <laughs> Great. Rolling rock beer. Grab a rock. Dunkin' Donuts Vanilla Chai, a creamy blend of tea, vanilla, honey, and spices. Just a thing for a slightly more sophisticated break. I moved into a new house when Mom got this great new job. I heard her talking to Dad about doing the right thing with her retirement money. The t Row Price Rollover Advantage makes it easy to roll over your old 401k. Our dedicated retirement specialist can help you work out the details with your former employer to move your money and even help you choose the funds that are right for you. t Row Price offers 100% no-load mutual funds. Over 70% beat their 3, 5, and 10-year LIPR averages. Call t Row Price. Invest with confidence. <laughs> Rich, delicious hot chocolate from Dunkin' Donuts. Just the thing for when you want to feel all warm inside. You see by three, let's take a look at Shooting the Rock, brought to you by Rolling Rock. Grab a rock. You can see the shooting. Three-point shooting tonight, Villanova four, Boston College seven. Four of those belong to Troy Bell, but Andrew Bryant has the other three. Six, seven, 232-pound junior has spotted up nicely. It's really done a nice job reading the defense. The fade, this one off the Jermaine Watson feed. I mean, he just has found spots and picked his spots to score when it hasn't been Bell or Smith. I tell you what, he's having fun, too. Yes, he is. <laughs> he's having a really good time. Great to see because he played with a heavy heart. His mom had been ill for a large portion of the early part of the season, and then he lost her in mid-season. So nice to see the young man rebound. Bell to Dornacamp. And you work off of him. Tried to go inside. It was off the leg and out of bounds. So we'll get a new 35 on the clock. Which is okay with the Eagles because they've now got the lead. Yep, time to score, play with it. And something about senior dominated basketball teams, or at least upper class dominated basketball teams. And there's one of them, senior. 35 points for Bell. Slipped in along that baseline. Which is the lead back to five in as many as seven here in the second half. That is a season high for Troy Bell. Right back out to Ray for three. No good. Is that right over the back? It is. The second foul on Ricky Wright. Troy Bell's career high, by the way, is 42. His previous season high, as you mentioned, was 34. He's got 35 tonight. He's not far from that. As quickly as he can pull the trigger. Oh, he can score eight or ten points in a heartbeat. Yes. <laughs> as he did to start off the second half. He and Smith really started the surge, and then Bryant kind of capped it off with his three three-pointers. comes Buchanan, so the Wildcats will try to get some offense back. It has been missing. Remember, they had the 67% shooting in the first half. They have not been there in the second half. One out of two for the sophomore from Canada. What would you attribute to that Boston College defense here in the second half? Perhaps making some adjustments. Villanova wants to stretch the clock as much as possible here. 74-68. Boy, underneath. And the rebound by Bryant. 
ahead of the pack at Tennant that's too strong out of bounds. And the Eagles that time in just a little too much of a hurry. Yes, Troy Bell a little bit upset with himself. And I tell you this, we're going over the offensive struggles and the absence of Frazier who can score off putbacks and things and Ricky Wright coming off the setting the screens. I mean, this is a guard dominated Villanova team. So as they continue to miss and shoot jumpers, all that pressure. And they got a timeout, just barely. They had the trap on right in front of the Villanova bench. And he calls the timeout with 6.28 to play. 74-68 is our score. Tell you, the Eagles defense here in the second half course has had a lot to do with this turnaround, not just the offense of Smith, Bell, and Bryant. Yeah, and I think Villanova, in the midst of all these struggles, they've become predictable offensively. And one of the things they've started to do a lot of is shoot three-point shots and focus a little bit too much on the perimeter, but in the absence of a really great interior presence, they're really forced to have their guards make plays. Well, that has been one of their problems during the slide is getting offense from different teams. Now, you look at the last meeting, the game was played at Villanova. And 19 Boston College turnovers, certainly helping the Wildcats. Gary Buchanan had the big game. He had 27 points. But, of course, Mr. Bell, not to be outdone, had 31 points. But the final was 94 to 83, and they were 5-0 and in the Big East. Went to UConn and lost, went home, lost to West Virginia. And they've not really been the same since. Nope. Right inside. Does not get the roll. The foul will be on Bryant, his third. So Ricky's going to have to get his two points at the line. The Wildcats will get some rest, Doris. They don't play their final regular season game until Sunday. Much needed rest. They'll play Pittsburgh at the First Union Center. Panthers have that meeting with Seton Hall tomorrow in Pittsburgh. And that will be the real test for the Pirates, who have been the hottest team in the Big East. Hit it with a nice rebound. Club, nine straight. Unbelievable. And if you have not heard, Syracuse beat Notre Dame in South Bend. Sydney went to the left hand, missed the shot. Buchanan pushes. Snowden did not travel. And Buchanan goes to the baseline, tried to go underneath against Dornicamp and draws the foul. And so Nate is fouled out. He'll depart with three points, which is about what he averages per game, and that's number five. So he becomes the first to foul out. That's going to bring Smith back on. He's been out for the last five and a half minutes when he picked up his fourth foul. So after sitting on the bench for five and a half minutes, in which his team came on to take the lead, he's going to have to come back and try to play the last six minutes with four fouls himself. Yeah, and Al Skinner was going to essentially let him go one and one, and... Use one until he's done, and now Craig Smith will come back in and play the duration, or at least until he gets number five. Well, when he gets number five, <laughs> they've got some problems. Yes. Well, they'd have to go small. Watson, I, you wonder if they'd come back with him. He's certainly been productive in the minutes he's had, Craig Smith. A rebound shy of a double-double. Well, the three three-pointers by Andrew Bryant here in the second half, plus he's had a couple of nice rebounds as well. Yes. And Buchanan is usually money at the free throw line. Two of three tonight, a dozen points. But there are some other elements in the midst of Troy Bell's brilliance. Brian could shoot the three. Sydney, you've got to be aware of him on the on the board and attacking the rim. Jermaine Watson competes hard. I mean, sometimes he can get out of control, but he does compete. 74-71. Buchanan trying to slow down Bell. They find Smith. Now Sydney. Working against Sullivan, goes to the baseline, looks for some help, gets it from Minnis, he penetrates, Bryant, three-pointer on the way, and he'll get three free throws. The foul is on Buchanan, he's got four. Now, 
Andrew Bryant probably shoots three better than he does one. <laughs> They're very close to it anyway. 55%. Well, you make the adjustment. Hinnett gets off his feet. They got a challenge because he's knocked too many down. He and Snow. Well, you'd rather have him get his three right here yes. than from outside the arc. Much better. A dozen for him. And one of three Eagles in double figures, along with Smith and Bell. Sumter checked back in for Villanova. Wildcats trying to mount well, one last push here in the final five and a half minutes. Bryant 2-3, 13 now for the junior. It's only five points, but That's right. it, it has this feel that BC is in complete control for some reason. Boy, with a drive oh. and a basket. So tough. Good read. Had to put it high off the window. Did it perfectly. Three-point game. Right now matched up with Smith inside. So the Eagles stay on the perimeter. Hinnick goes to Sidney. Working on Ray, lays it in. Yeah, Bell actually called that. He was not playing a point, but he looks at Hinnick, pulls on his jersey, and they get Sidney on the isolation. See the Wildcats trying to save as much clock as they can. Trailing by five. Thrown away as Ryan intercepts the pass that was intended that time for Sumter. Sydney over the top, knocked away. So right threw it away at one end, gets it back at the other. Here comes Villanova. Kick to Ray. Passes the three, dances inside, kicks it out. Now right. Up and in. Good execution. Ball reversal. You get your big guy inside. It's been a productive evening for Ricky Wright. He's got 20. Back to the three-point game. Seesawing on five, three. Over the last couple of minutes. Bryant will shoot another three and drill it. Uh, just on selfish play by Bell. He draws defenders and kicks it back to the big man. He has four three-pointers in the second half. 16 on the night. He's matched his career high. Boy, working hard, threw it away. And Sumter winds up just to our right. And the young lady who's been working so hard to keep the floor dry got the brunt of that one as she was in between the two tables. But she says she's okay. Dick Kelly will help her. She got an up-close and personal visit here in Boston. It's 81 to 75, a six-point lead for the Eagles. Don't leave us. There is a place where the rest of the world's sports sedans can be found. We call it a rear view mirror. The BMW 3 Series, the ultimate driving machine. Lease the 3 Series now for $2.99 a month, only through March 4th. There's something in your store that's really shaking things up. It's Banquet Home Style Bakes. Why? Because now the original box dinner is packed with even more butterball chicken to go with those savory vegetables and that golden biscuit topping for a complete real meal. So you can bank on Banquet to give you even more chicken, more beef, or more turkey. Banquet Homestyle Bakes. It's all you need to pick up. Hey kids, ever dream of being a television sports reporter? Well, this is your chance. AT&T 3 and the Boston Celtics are searching for a cub reporter. If you're between the ages of 13 and 15, tell us in 50 words or less why you'd like to be a sports reporter. If selected, you'll work at a Celtics game, interview players, and edit a story that will air on AT&T 3. Send your entries to Chris Miller at AT&T 3, 8 North Main Street, Attleboro, Mass, 02703. The deadline for entries is March 18th, so don't delay.
Tonight's Big East game is brought to you by BMW. Test drive the ultimate driving machine at your local BMW center. We are back at Chestnut Hill. It is the Eagles leading 81-75, and you can see the Wildcats. There's no quit in them, Doris, but you wonder about the fatigue factor with the four games in eight days. And I certainly think the second half of the Virginia Tech game, when they gave up 57, that was a significant part of what happened. They gave up 49 in the first half to Villanova. Scored 49 in the first half, so they got the offense they've been looking for in the first half, but it's not been there in the second. Smith draws a triple team, finds Sidney, back to Bell. This is a two, no good. Sidney has the rebound and a foul called on Ray. Allen Ray picks up number three. Ryan Sidney, the toughness of mine, he just, he just gets after things, Ryan Sidney. And, and what's difficult about him, he's got excellent footwork, and so it really takes a disciplined guy to keep a body on and keep moving with him. There's that stretch of four games in four different locations. The last three, a tough stretch on the road, Doris, no matter how you look at it. Yes. Road wins don't come easy. Villanova. Three and seven overall on the road. Three and four in conference coming into tonight. And how about Boston College with eight road wins this year? That's yes, the most really they've had impressive. in 11 years. Very impressive. Eight well, points now for Ryan Sidney. You think about what Alex Skinner did in the, in the two years prior to this. 47 wins over so the course of the last two years. If he gets this one, he'll have 17 on this season. Now the fans here at the uh, Conti Forum beginning to sense it. There's still plenty of time left. Three minutes to go. But the Wildcats have to make something happen offensively, and they haven't been able to do it. There's Bell with a rebound. Snowden with a steal from behind. Foy working on Bryant. Now Snowden to Foy. He missed the shot. Out of bounds. Well, just great hustle on both sides. You love to see guys play that hard. Well, Jay Wright is on his feet, pounding his palm. He likes the effort, especially from Snowden. Boy, I tell you, yes. he's been terrific. Oh, uh, he really has. What a change in years for Snowden. Comes all the way out to Sullivan, hands to Foy. They've got the fresh clock. They need some baskets. Buchanan. That one was deflected. They just have an offensive goal, Ken. It uh, close for that, There were wow. two that were close on that possession at that end for Villanova, and they didn't get the call on either one. Yeah, excuse me, a defensive goal, Ken. I, I thought he got a piece of that facility. There's the overplay and a foul. Let's take a look at the other end. Boy commits his second foul. The key is, did he get a piece while this thing is in the cylinder? Very, very close. Very close, yeah. So we always get that second look. Hinnant will be at the free throw line. Lewis shooting two. He's got two shots and a double bonus, 224 to play in regulation. Georgetown Hoy has won a close one at West Virginia last night, and that assures them a trip to New York City. So the game coming up this weekend between Virginia Tech and West Virginia is going to be critical for the Mountaineers' chances as they battle Rutgers. Trying to avoid the cellar. Right inside lays it in. 22 points for Ricky Wright. They put the timeout. It's 85 to 77, 212 to play. A disappointing year for the Hurricanes of Miami. Yes, Darius Trice has put up some great numbers during the course of the season, but Syracuse, well, they make it a four-point win. Boy, Kelvin Sampson, does he have things going at Oklahoma now? 57-24 all over Nebraska. And Rick Barnes, 
former Providence head coach, 53-38 over Kansas State. Well, Syracuse will now go to 9-2 and two in the division, so they have the edge over Pittsburgh there should those two teams end in tie as far as who's number one seed and who's number two seed. Yeah, amazing as you see Florida up early at Georgia. It's amazing that at this point in the year, nothing is decided. Each team in the conference, approximately two games to play. No seeds yet determined. We don't even know for sure who's going to New York City. That's right. At this point. The buys, the buys that you spoke of us earlier this evening being so important. You cannot, it is so tough. I don't know that, it, no one has won having to have played four days. No. Pittsburgh the only team to get there. Now this is the year the Panthers hope to get there and finish the job because they have not the last two times. Yes, what a magnificent game it was last year between oh, yes. Connecticut and Pittsburgh. Wow. Just over two minutes to go. Bell has had another sensational night. Has that one blocked out of bounds and went off the leg of Hinnant. So the Wildcats with a minute 56 to play will get it back. But they've got a lot of work to do. And the offensive success that they had in the first half, scoring 49 points, Dorsey has not been there in the second half. They've scored only 28 points in the second half. That just goes to that inconsistency that Jay Wright has mentioned all year. Buchanan for three. That's what they need. 16 now for Gary. That's his third three-pointer. Two possession game and Gary Buchanan's pressure forces a BC turnover. Now this thing not over. You cannot lose your focus if you're Boston College. It's 85-80. And back onto the court comes Jermaine Watson. Smith goes to the bench. And no, he's not. He doesn't want Smith to go to the bench. Bryant goes to the bench. Buchanan the three, and then he's just gonna get up in pressure. I mean, they've got to make plays, and there's the turnover. Well, they're going to need more plays. Down five with a minute and a half to go. Foy. Turn around. Bending no good. And the rebound to Bell. They have a bad look that time, Doris. No. Just get it to go. They had a lot of those this half. They just rolled around the rim and out. Bell. Nice catch that time by Ryan Sidney. That was a bullet. Hinnett goes up and is met by Wright, but Smith the follow. 21 for Smith. 87-80, final minute coming up. The Eagles hoping to nail down a bye in New York City. Ray with a drive and a stuff back by Wright. Timeout. 24 points for Ricky Wright. That's a season high for him. Well, you get a little bit out of place because you're gambling defensively. Wright makes a good play as a safety, but because everybody else is sold out, Smith gets the chippy. Oh, well, it's 87 to 82 with 54 and a half seconds to go. You look at some of the scoring here tonight. Craig Smith with 19. Troy Bell with 35 points. Andrew Bryant, four threes in the second half, 16 points. A 24-point night from Ricky Wright. Buchanan with 16. Snowden with 14. Alan Ray with 11. Yes. Well, a reminder, the Big East Championship is coming. To Lee Brown, the big three, Karan Butler, an outstanding game along with Ben Gordon. It all starts next Wednesday at Madison Square Garden, the ConAgra Foods Big East Championship. There's the number. There are limited tickets still available, and it should be a dandy tournament. Yeah, oh, there's no question. The Eagles trying to go to 10 and 5 in the conference play and knock the Wildcats out of a chance to get that by. Boy, you know, different nights for Boston College. Some different guys to step up. Last outing, it was Watson with 17. Tonight, Brian, Dorna Camp has had flashes. You can't really afford to fall asleep on any guy on this Boston College team. Even Sidney, for all his struggles offensively shooting, boy, he's picked up in a lot of, lot of other areas. Well, they got the hand, the ball in the hands of the guy you want because Bell can shoot free throws. And Watson works it up, finds Bell, and right 
catch the foul. Well, you know, they hit Hennett pretty hard, and there was no whistle on Hennett, and then you got no choice. Troy Bell at the line is nine of nine. For Bell here to add to a terrific night. It is a season high for him of 35 points. Now I'm running out of room on my scorecard. <laughs> averaging 30 as you see his his numbers. And remember last year he played a good portion of last season with that knee injury and his numbers were magnificent but he really the level that he obtained as a sophomore not there. Well he guess what senior year is back. Well, especially the last dozen games with seven times having scored 30 or more tonight 37 points. The difference is seven as Floyd gets in a drive and it's blocked by Sydney. And a foul called on Snowden. Not much that Derek could do. They're feeling it here at Conti Forum. Well, we talked about Sydney's ability to contribute in other areas. Defensively, in the midst of this great stretch by BC. He's been sound on that end of the floor. Solid block there against Floyd. The Eagles looking for win number six in a row in their ninth in the last 11 games. And if BC was on the bubble prior to tonight's game, you have to believe that getting 10 wins and 17 overall with one to play in the regular season, they are off the bubble. Especially if it's one of the key factors that that committee looks at is performance down the stretch because it's six straight. Buchanan gets inside and able to finish. Gary now with 18, but it might be too little, too late for the Wildcats. Villanova doesn't get the call there as the ball bounces out of bounds. Smith will handle. For Villanova, a home game on Sunday at the First Union Center against Pittsburgh will finish their regular season. And the Eagles have one more home game here on Saturday. You'll be here for that, Doris, if they play UConn. Yes, if Connecticut takes care of business against Providence, that could decide the East Division. They would decide yes, it would. the East now they have had a terrific second half and they have sweeps already this year against St. John's, Miami, Virginia Tech and a chance to sweep Connecticut. And trying to avoid the sweep by Villanova. So the Wildcats second half sag continues here tonight. But go back to what you said originally when we started this thing a couple of hours ago. Uh, there's a lot of freshmen playing a lot of minutes for Villanova. Yeah, and I think the absence of Frazier certainly changes the complexion. You talked about the rotation, the absence of him. One more body in the midst of a four-game and eight-day stretch with Curtis Sumter being out. You're losing a 20-minute-per-night guy, 7.6 boards. A significant loss. Now Buchanan will be gone after this season, but Snowden, who played well tonight, will be back. The four freshmen will be a year older. Certainly we saw spurts from Sumter and Allen off the bench, and you've got Foy, and if you can get Jason Frazier healthy again. That is very unusual right there. Villanova has the basketball left in it this season, and I think next season Jay Wright's team is certainly somebody that must be considered as a year older. The second one goes, so at the line, 12 of 13, and a 38-point performance by Troy Bell. Boy, forces up, missed the three. Smith has the rebound. Sidney at the other end in the closing second. He's in double figures. 92 to 84.
and he's going to try to catch his breath. He says he's okay. I tell you, he took a shot. Well, Ricky Wright goes to set the screen and say, and oh, that looks like a linebacker placing a hit. Wow. Might have knocked the wind out of Bell. It's going to put him back to the line. But he's not going to shoot because it was an offensive foul. It will be BC basketball with 4.2 to play. A 92 to 84 lead.